Hey, what it do, y'all? This your girl, Miss Danny, baby, back again on this nigga R. Kelly. Um, y'all, I just finished watching the three part series on uh, Lifetime Surviving R. Kelly, and um, my, my emotions have been like on a roller coaster, honestly. Um, I've been mad, I've been furious, <laughs> I've been cussing. You know, at the TV screen, there's parts I've cried. Um, but, you know, sad thing of it is, though, it's, it's no surprise that R. Kelly is just being proven to be the monster that I've always believed him to be on, you know, other platforms of mine. I've, you know, hanged this nigga by the balls. I've called him out, you know, three, four years ago, and I've actually disliked him even before that. Um, unlike many of us, we liked his music back in the 90s. Um, we tried to downplay our emotions, many of us. Like, maybe it's not as bad as we've heard maybe the Ali Aaliyah situation is just a one-off like type of weird type of situation that he didn't intend maybe 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 that was like back in the 90s but as more allegations came to the forefront as more rumors came out about this nigga as the tape came out where he was you know everybody knows the story about the sex tape and he's had many of them but the one that caused him to go to trial of the 14 year old little girl which was uh the singer uh sparkle's niece um it, it just spiraled downhill from there and as a survivor myself and also having a mom that was a pedophile sympathizer and family members that looked away and you know as you get older, they try to play you like, okay, you're the crazy one because you're the ones, you're the one that has the the courage to speak out. And I've always been that child. I've always been that child that, you know, you do something to me, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to speak on it, even if I'm scared. Um, but at that point, you know, if you're an underage child, the most that you can do is speak on it. It's up to the adults the authorities um, to handle the situation and I'm actually you know going to speak further on this type of dynamic but at the end of the day my question right now you know is is the the curse is fuck a surviving is the curse of R. Kelly something that the black community and more specifically black women perpetuating and the reason why i ask that is because when you think about a curse when you think of a curse even um sources online that tell you it's something that has to be believed and spoken to the detriment of someone else it's like when someone expresses harm and misfortune to call to come to befall someone else adversity misfortune and when curses are spewed it's express intent is for the person, the intended target to fall, to be damned, to have no luck, and to be 
just mocked and ridiculed from like forever. Look at this definition here, a curse, a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or something. And when you see something like that, y'all, it is my belief that the way black women speak, the way that so many defend this person, our Robert Sylvester Kelly, the way that he's defended, the way that he's praised, the way that he's elevated, the way that he's admired and lusted over is what's keeping this predator energy in force. It's the curse of that has been propagated, perpetrated, ushered in and continued by the black mother. I'm just going to keep it all the way motherfucking funky. Now, I will say <clears throat> that these predators like this, these men, and sometimes it's women, because in his case, it's actually coming out that one of the main predators that um, inflicted a lot of pain on him was when he was a child was actually his older sister. So that's a whole nother show. So black... You know, women do prey upon little boys. But a lot of times when we're talking about children, get off of that. My kitty messing with my stuff. But um, a lot of times when we're speaking about children being preyed upon, especially in a sexual nature, it's actually grown as men preying on little boys and girls. But regardless of the gender, they all need to be ca called out on front street. But here's my point. I'm going to try to make it short and sweet. When we're talking about a predator of the likes of a R. Kelly or African Bambada, and even if we expound like on a Bill Cosby and some other people that we know um, that have black faces like ours, they get by with the things that they do because they are being coddled. And, you know, if it were not the internet age, the age of television and video and camera phones and newspaper and, you know, blogs, interviews, these people would lie through their stanking teeth. No, 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 that didn't happen. It didn't happen. And it didn't happen. But see... For these bitches that coddle the likes of this monster, there's evidence everywhere. I'll give you an example. It's come to light that after this um, docu-series actually um, premiered and showed for the last three days on R. Kelly, his streaming services, now mind you, this Negro's uh, merchandise and his actual... Um, songs have been limited on a lot of radio stations thank god finally after 30 years and streaming services have limited um access they didn't cut a lot of them didn't cut him completely out but they limited you know access you had to really like search to find some of his songs but even despite that with this controversial content coming out the docuseries showing details on how this monster actually stalked and preyed upon girls you know they they said Aaliyah when he was first getting cool with her she was 12 this one 14 year old the one that you know was in the infamous tape they said she was 14 but when you saw the picture of her even though they covered her face but when you saw the picture of her her body looked like she's about 10 Despite all the evidence, they're saying that he, he had a streaming spike. Look at this article. R. Kelly enjoys sales and streaming spike following controversial Surviving R. Kelly specials premiere. On the way home, like two days ago, it, after the first um, segment, 
I heard a lady on some um, R&B radio station saying, man, I don't care what nobody say. Um, I still like R. Kelly. Um, that man's a genius. And with all this stuff going on, I'm going to have to hurry up and get by all his albums because they're going to try to snatch his stuff off of the radio. Or she said, yeah, off of the radio, and they're going to snatch his stuff off of the shelves. So actually, this radio host, I forget her name, but it's here in Cincinnati, Ohio. This radio host said that she's going to have to go buy this nigga R. Kelly stuff right fast in a hurry because they're going to try to stop her dude's material from being available to the public. That was her fear. Her fear wasn't that R. Kelly might be allowed to rape and sodomize and dehumanize young girls and naive women. No, no, no. Her concern was she's not going to be able to get his material, his art. And with this particular article where they're explaining, he was, um, there was like a resurgence and people downloading his material. Yo, look at this arrogant fuck. You should see the comments. You should see the comments. This is one of his victims right here. Now he was actually one of the oldest survivors that was victimized by this stupid motherfucker. Um, she was one of the, oh, she was actually in her thirties, but I'll get to her in a minute. But look, all of these albums, The Chocolate Factory, The Essential R. Kelly album, The TP2.com album, The Chocolate Factory, they say that go back to 2003. The Essential R. Kelly album, this is saying it went back to 2014. TP2, 2000, 12 play. 1993, y'all. All these old ass records. 12 play almost 30 years ago. This nigga is getting streaming from it. People are buying it all over again. And then I was like, wow, that's crazy. You would think this make this dude look so horrible that people wouldn't be able to stand to even hear his voice no 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 lo and behold look at the black woman in all of her glory she's responding shut up you racist twit white people do the same thing for leonardo dicaprio woody allen ryan Philippe, andy dick Jim Morrison, Elvis Presley, and countless white celebs who date teenagers. Unlike many of them, R. Kelly is not even a registered sex offender, nor has he ever been convicted of any crimes. These are just rumors and tabloid sensationalism. Everybody is not going to be as dumb as you and believe everything they are told. Y'all. Did you just see what this broad put down? And she's not alone. There's many. There's many defenders. And one of his own victims, which um, her story, I believe, was the one in the last one that we saw last night. This broad right here. Um, I feel bad for her, but at the same time, it's like, you was dumb, though. Because she said that she, when she was up until her 30s, she was that super fan, as she described herself. She had heard all the stories about R. Kelly. She had heard about the tape. I don't know if she saw it. She had heard about Aaliyah. She had heard about everything. She knew the trial went down, all of this. But she said, nah, people just lying. I just like his music. I think he's so sexy. Oh my God, oh my God. That's my favorite artist ever. And she said that she would actually put people out her house if they dared speak ill of this man. She would put them out her house. So, okay, you're putting them um, out of your house because you're defending his honor. This man you don't even know have never even met. <laughs> You feel me? But then when she finally did get to meet meet him, 
She said to her surprise, he actually took an interest and slid her his number. And before she knew it, she's in this worldwide, um, whirlwind situation with him where they're visiting each other. She's flying into Chicago. He's coming down to Atlanta because she lives in Atlanta. Um, and they were seeing each other for like a few years. And her reasoning is not only is he her favorite celebrity ever, but at least he's honest because he told me that he got other women and blase, blase, blase. And she said that she was so used to being abused by her ex-husband who put paws on her and also was a serial cheater that she was just at least grateful that R. Kelly told her the truth, that he has other woman, women. So not only is he this superstar, talented angel from heaven in her eyes, but he's an honest man and he tells the truth. He doesn't lie about his other women. So she had all this respect and admiration and she just fell madly in love with him and she never saw the bad side of him really until she moved he moved her into his mansion down in Atlanta and she said there from there on out it was a horror story this woman said that she went through unspeakable defilement and atrocities and dehumanization and just stuff to, that he put her through that made her feel so unworthy. And that's what predators do. We have the, the sociopath, narcissist type of um, people. They'll play real nice in the beginning. And, 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 you know, it's easy to get suckered in. You know, we've all met the narcissist types before. And if you're not careful, before you know it, you're actually snagged in their web. But at least for a lot of people, if they find themselves caught up with um, a toxic individual, at least many of them don't have evidence <laughs> of the person doing just like crazy, crazy shit. But this woman in her 30s done heard all of the folklore, all the rumors, all the um, court cases and the speculation about R. Kelly, but she just threw it to the wind. And it is my opinion that in a case like her, look at her. She's a pretty girl, but she's brown skin. She's a chocolate girl. She's not racially ambiguous. She's been through an abusive relationship in her past history. And I wouldn't even doubt it, even though I haven't heard her speak on it, but I wouldn't even doubt it if she was a child victim of abuse when she was coming up. So this breeds a certain type of self-loathing and lack of self-care, a lack of self awareness, a lack of self-importance and self-value that's easy to be used and manipulated by the sexual predator she even admitted this nigga r kelly he don't care if you're 14 or if you're 40 if you got a naive mindset and you look like he can run game and you look like you don't really know what time it is he said he'll 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 fuck with you but if you look like the type of girl that ain't really easy to run game on um and there was more than one person that said this in this docuseries he would he wouldn't mind having sex with you but he sends you back home on your way but these types like her and the younger girls and younger girls of course you know, they're not even grown, so they're easy. They're going to be even easier to run game on. Um, those are the ones that he actually targeted. This little girl right here is Jocelyn Savage. This is one of the girls that her parents still have not talked to her. Um, let's see here. This baby here, though. 
this had me crying y'all oh my god her story just broke my heart because her mom here's her mom right here she hadn't spoke to her daughter for like a long long ass time i believe it was like a a, a year or two um let's see her name's um dominique Gar well her daughter's name um is dominique gardner um, and her mom's name is Michelle. So this is Michelle. And she was determined to find her daughter. And when she heard this docuseries was coming out and they invited her and she had to fly out to LA, she got a tip that her daughter was also in LA with, um, R. Kelly's entourage. So she was determined to find her. And when she finally found out where her baby girl was located, the girl, the, the, the daughter wouldn't even speak to her. The woman actually knocked on the girl, on, on the door and, um, the, the girl didn't even hardly want to speak to her because she was scared because, um, other people that were in R. Kelly's camp were obviously there in the hotel with her, um, behind the door. And it was just so sad. I was like, oh my God, this little girl is actually a Stockholm victim. And... When they showed the girl, here's the mom here, because when she left, after she briefly spoke to her daughter, she said the daughter called back, and the daughter just was, like, crying, and she asked her mom to come back and um, come back later, but he had totally morphed her into a little boy's appearance. Here she go right here. He wanted her to play role play as a little boy. Um, and I've heard speculation that R. Kelly does not only like to, uh, humiliate and degrade little girls, but he also has some homosexual tendencies, allegedly, allegedly, but a hey, here, this little girl did not even dress tomboyish like this at first. She had long hair. He made her cut off her hair. She's wearing the ball cap. And they just showed you, for those of you that have not seen the docuseries, please um, put your seatbelt on. It's going to take you on an ro emotional roller coaster, but you'll see how things played out with this little girl. But this Michelle, the mom, she was one of the lucky ones. She eventually was able to convince her, to, her child to come home, but the psychological damage had been done. This girl's going to need therapy you know, for years, if not the rest of her life. Um, and it was just sad. I, I, I was just like crying. I was sobbing. But, um, but back to the black man. This super fan, this woman here, <clears throat> as many of these women are. I even got an R. Kelly video on this little channel that I have here. And I've had to delete a lot of comments with broads i expect the niggas to um somewhat cape for him because you know he's a black man and he represents their image so you know they don't want no heat um they don't they don't want smoke as they say on um with the little kids he you know they don't want the smoke so but uh, uh because he looks like them but a girl, we're so disconnected with our womb and with our vaginas and with our own sexuality and uh, disconnected with our own importance as women. We don't feel, feel as a collective that we're deserving to have a seat at the table of womanhood that we'll cape for, exalt, and defend somebody that don't even like you not only does he not like you this motherfucker hates you this big youtuber her name's tasha k here she is right here she just broke this a few days ago i believe that she broke this story like about a couple days before the docuseries series started that actually Aaliyah. Not only, uh, uh, apparently somebody in R. Kelly's camp said not only did she witness R. Kelly having sex, allegedly, allegedly, with Aaliyah <clears throat> on the tour bus, but also different people in his camp and 
um, a family member actually busted R. Kelly having a threesome with Aaliyah and her mom. And her mom is pictured here. This is this is Aaliyah and this is her mom. Miss Houghton. I believe her first name is Diane. But I know their last name is Houghton. So, okay. If we're going to believe that this actually happened, and I have no reason to believe that it did not... Because black women are sacrificing their children to predators. For those that don't send them directly down the river to a predator, um, the other ones are being so indifferent and so far emotionally removed, like in the Bambada situation, that they allowed her kids just to be out here um, just the defending themselves in whatever way that they can, that predators get them that way. But in this case, just like a lot of Hollywood parents, they sell their children to the highest bidder because they think that they can get some fortune out of it. But y'all need to check out Tasha K's video. This girl is the truth when she's speaking on these predators out here. Um, and she's funny as shit. <laughs> her channel is Unwind with Tasha K, and I give her her props, man. She she is holding R. Kelly's feet to the fire when it comes to these allegations, and people are just confiding in her. Um, R. Kelly's brother, Carrie Kelly, is actually one of the ones that came out and admitted, he's the one that came out and admitted that his sister, their older sister, is the one that molested him. And molested R. Kelly, so, hey. But, and so people are coming to Tasha K with, you know, updated material that they didn't, weren't brave enough to really come out with maybe like 10, 15, 20 years ago. But, uh, I mean, the, the river is running over now. So now, allegedly... And, and poor Aaliyah, because this, this does not speak bad about Aaliyah. This is not Aaliyah's fault. She was a baby. When you're a teenager and a child, and like I said, she wasn't even a teenager when she first met him. She was a uh, a preteen. She was 12 years old when she met this ape. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She was 12 years old when he started mentoring her. Her uncle actually introduced her to R. Kelly. And her parents were down with it. So apparently, Miss Houghton found him attractive as well and figured, you know, she's going to do what it do in order to guarantee them checks that are coming in, okay? So not only are we selling our daughters for dollars, we're selling our daughters for dick. We're selling our daughters because we, um, not me specifically, but the black woman collective are finding men like this attractive. And as a wise woman recently just said on YouTube, um, a woman that I respect a whole bunch, I heard her speaking as well, BB, and she said that a lot of black woman's sexual urges, our sexual desires, our sexual attractions, and our sexual fantasies are rooted in abuse. Because our first experiences with sex, with sexuality, is introduced to us by individuals that seek to harm. They seek to harm and they actually hate you. So they're turning on your sexuality way before your time. And not only are they turning on your sexuality before your time, before you're ready, before you don't even know what the fuck it is. But these motherfuckers actually hate the womb that they're trying to penetrate. So how you think about them? Them apples. <clears throat> Somebody that hates you is filling up on you, 
touching your private parts. Trying to introduce his sexual organ to your sexual organs. And he's filled with so much animosity and so much hatred in a lot of cases because he himself has been introduced to it too young and too early. But instead of sparing you the pain that he or she, but in this case, he himself has felt, he wants to pass on the pain like a virus, like the dumb broads that many black women are, they co-sign the curse. They co-sign it. His wife. I feel I feel bad for Andrea Kelly. This is her right here. I feel bad for her. She had three children by R. Kelly because he abused her. Wouldn't he? All of them give stories where he didn't allow them to eat. He would punish them by uh, denying them food. They would get ass whoopings, humiliated, pissed on, made to have sex with other women and engage in homosexual behavior. He humiliated the fuck out of them. But Andrea Kelly knew about Aaliyah. She heard about it and still married him. See, black women don't realize the beast that they're staring in the face. And our moms don't, they don't train us up to be aware. We grow up with some perverted foolish, unwise, imaginary fantasy that, you know, it might be a few bad apples out there, but most and the overwhelming majority of the men or males in our race are benevolent. They love us. They care about us. They gonna do right by us. They don't hate us. They care about us. They love us. They love our wombs. They love our babies. They love the way we look. They love our essence, our energy, our beauty, our personalities. No, 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 baby girl. No, no, no. The sad fact is there are more than just this Robert Kelly here. The sad fact is the black community is overwhelmed with men that think like this. The black community is overwhelmed with men that hate girl children, boy children, and grown women. But we're unawares, like the dumbasses. Super fans is what we call ourselves. Super fucking fans over predators. This lady here, Sparkle, she's the one that introduced her niece to R. Kelly. And she was the little girl in the infamous urination video here's the most beautiful pretty little and they all were pretty little girls all, each and every last one of them but here's Aaliyah and most people will agree she's indeed pretty but even da Dame Dash is coming out now saw a video with him where he's admitting in this video here, I'll link it at the um, in the description box. 
but I won't play it here. But Dame Dash is admitting that Aaliyah, when they were friends, and he's full of shit too because it's always been going around that he wanted to get with Aaliyah as well. It was a lot of grown women, or grown, not grown women, but grown men that were trying to get at her. And she was such a young, young person, you know, when she was in her teens and early 20s, grown-ass men were trying to get with her. But, but he even admitted when they were cool, she admitted that, it was very hard for Aaliyah to speak on R. Kelly. That when you would bring it up to her, she would just actually shut down. Now, initially, when they were first cool, you see in videos with her, she was kind of <coughs> upbeat and bubbly. But like I said, the narcissist and the sociopath and the psychopath and the sexual deviance, a lot of times, they will be cool with you. They'll build you up like you're the salt of the earth. The most beautiful thing that they've ever seen and blase, blase, blase until they get inside your head and get you, form you in the image that they want you to be. And then the, the Satan, the Satan energy inside of them comes out and they start to abuse. And so Dame Dash said that she actually told him that man, he's a, she, the, all she could say is like that man, he's a very bad man. Now, this is the same little girl that initially was saying, oh, he's my best friend. He's my best friend. We're just best friends. Was coached and coerced to say, to lie about her age to the public. It's disgusting. But this deviant behavior... Even though I feel like the men that do this should be put into a public execution and their heads taken from them on a public square and televised for everybody to see. Or maybe some street justice like pour gasoline on their asses and throw a rubber tire around them and set them on fire. Tie her anchor to their asses and throw them in the ocean and just watch them drown. I mean, I could think of some hideous things to do to these motherfuckers because I think they are a representation of so much evil that it, it defies its explanation. And so you are Kelly fans, you can hate me all the fuck you want, but fuck R. Kelly, fuck the bitches that exalt him fuck the fans that excuse him and fuck the parents more specifically the daughter um the mothers that hand their children over to predators like this Aaliyah had no business in the company of this grown-ass man by herself when she was a teenage girl. No business. This little girl here, she's one of his most victi recent victims. I believe she was either 17 or 19. I think she was like 19 when she first started messing with R. Kelly. And again, I will give her some wiggle room because she was very young. She's still very young. And she said, she heard, now mind you, R. Kelly, his shit go back 30 years. This girl wasn't even 20 when she met him. So she's not going to remember every last single solitary thing. But she had heard about the sex cult recently that he supposedly had like in Atlanta or has in Atlanta. And she said when she started messing with R. Kelly, just on a humbug on one particular occasion, he got a chance to see one of the victims that was televised on TV. I believe it's this girl here. I believe it's this girl here. He, she saw, she saw him um, introduce her to, um, that girl to her. 
And she was like, oh my God, this is the, this is really the girl that they're talking about that was in the sex cult. So she said from that point on, she, she cut it off with him. And after she told some people, it was encouraged for her to go to the doctors just to make sure she had, didn't have a sexually transmitted disease. And she's like, why? I don't feel like I have a sexually transmitted disease. So what she did was got some blood work and come to find out, sure enough, she got herpes allegedly from R. Kelly so okay this man is all kind of nasty this little girl Azriel her parents ain't seen her in three years this is could be the one that can hang him because even though she's of um legal age now I believe she's like about 20 years old now but when he first started messing with her, she was still in high school school, and she was only 17. This is probably the reason why his um, his staff and his camp won't allow her to see her parents. Um, but he snuck her, um, convinced her to come meet her at a hotel, him at a hotel, when she was still in high school, claiming it was going to be an audition. And he, he actually had sex with her the same day. And her parents didn't find out till years later when they were able to find some of her old text messages. This girl's locked away, been kept away from her parents, and there's nothing that they can do now because she's grown. But the statute of limitations are being lifted on sexual crimes in a lot of states. And if they're not totally being abandoned, they're at least being extended. And this man raped her as recent as like about two to three years ago. So this girl could be the case that hangs that nigga, hangs that nigga, hangs that nigga. And like I said, I hope they, I hope they set him, his ass on fire. Okay. But I'm gonna try to calm down. But I'm going to leave with this. And look how smug he's looking right here. Oh my God. I, I just hate this dude so much. I just hate him. But what I hate more so than R. Kelly is the community that defends a monster like this. A community that doesn't care about its own children or its girl children. Look at this young lady. I believe this is like the 18 or 19 year old that he was messing with like a couple years ago. He's playing with your head like, ah ha, ah ha. I'm still messing with young girls and y'all can't say nothing if they over 18. Look at me. I'm still that nigga. Fuck y'all. He's giving the middle finger to everybody. All kind of craziness is in the middle of his face. He, he's just a sick, sick individual. This little girl, she was one of the ones, she's in her 30s now, but she was one of the ones that went actually went to R. Kelly's trial and was there every day, again, a super fan, and she was a teenager, she was about 15 years old, didn't, yeah, about 15 or 16, didn't realize the, the gravity of the evil that she was witnessing. She said she went to the trial every day. She was there when, you know, they're showing the, the, the tape, the infamous tape. But even then, it didn't resonate in her mind. Like, hey, you know, uh, maybe this guy really did do this and maybe he'll do it to me. And she went to his day every day, standing outside, um, you know, caping for him. And come to find out, she was also a molestation victim um, when she was younger. But as he always do, he slides the number. He convinces you to come to his his place, either at a hotel or to one of his um, residences, and then it's on and popping from there. And he was she was also held captive in his house for a long time. Um, she finally got away with the disclosure, um, an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, where he paid her so much. Uh, so much so much money per month to keep her mouth shut and he has many cases where he's paid off victims but this particular girl um she decided nah i'm not gonna stay quiet despite the nda so um i believe she's writing a book as well and i hope that she's able to heal 
but it's no surprise that her actually being a um a sexual abuse uh, survivor would actually be be one to defend him the ugliness of R. Kelly is just it's just overwhelming but I'm gonna end on the note there's a lot of backlash coming to the rapper um, Chance the Rapper because he made a statement where he said that you know, because he's actually did shows with R. Kelly, and he said he put it at the back of his mind about the abuse allegations because, you know, actually because he admitted because the, the victims were black girls and black women. And nobody takes black women and black girls seriously when they're being abused. That's so sad, y'all. And the reason why that is, again, because that black mother doesn't take it seriously. The black mother at this point is so wretched and so whack. And shout, shout out to the black women that's, that's doing their damn job. I'm not talking about y'all. But to the average beaten down, broken, Stockholm victim minded, having asked black women to the average one of them they don't see the value and the beauty of their girl ch girl children not even their boy children but especially their girl children they're so disconnected from them and they don't realize that when predators abuse their children even if he's not um obvious in his abuse towards you if he abuses your children that motherfucker is actually shitting on you. So for you broads out there that have an ego the size of Saturn, let that sink in. Let that shit sink in. That motherfucker is shitting on you. He's shitting on what your womb created. He's shitting on the, the mirror image of you. He hates you too. That's why he's doing that to your child. And you too dumb to realize it. And even though what Chance said when they had that little clip when he said that, I put it in context. And what he said is somewhat accurate because he admitted, and I will give him some points for at least admitting that he was wrong in his stance against the, about the abuse of these children. But he said the reason why it was the way it was is because the black male is the one that's always defended in the black community. And I'll let you hear it for yourself. We're programmed to really be hypersensitive to black male oppression. It's just prevalent in all media and when you see niggas getting beat up by the police, it's, it's men. Like, that's like a, a, a scene that, that you see. Like, slavery, for a lot of people, they envision men in chains. Like, but black women are, you know, exponentially higher oppressed and violated group of people. Like, just in comparison to the whole world, you know? Maybe I didn't care because I didn't value the accuser's story like because they were black women because like and he basically summed it up right there he didn't value their stories because they were black women and by default he doesn't value them because the black women don't value them black women could shut this shit down in a nanosecond if we would just value ourselves and value our babies stop birthing babies by unworthy motherfuckers and that the babies that we do have stop handing them over to a community does that that does not love them but this man is telling you right here 
when we when we think of black male oppression we can vision it as the man being in shackles the white man holding him down but when you hear about a black woman or a black girl child being abused it's like a foreign fuck a fucking foreign language all of a sudden the person's speaking chinese and you don't understand you can't visualize it you can't feel empathy or compassion and that's the dysfunction of this community He did say here, he just posted this on Twitter yesterday. He said the quote was taken out of context, but the truth is any of us who have ever ignored the R. Kelly stories or ever believed he was being set up attacked by the system as black men often are, were doing so at the detriment of black women and girls. I apologize to all of his survivors for working with him and for taking this long to speak out. So there you have it, people. The curse of R. Kelly and other niggas that are like him. The perverted, demonic predators that reign free and roam free in this world, more specifically in this community. As long as they can sing, as long as they can dance, as long as they can put on some sh shade, um, some shades, some designer shades and some designer clothes and look good, you know, supposedly to these women. Um, and he can turn on that sexual energy that was turned on in you too early in your life when you were still uh, four and five years old. He's tapping into that demonic energy that was introduced to you when you was a child but as long as he can tap into that with his explicit lyrics and his melodies and his uh, musical content and as long as these black women stay disconnected from their own pain their own suffering and the abuse that they themselves endure and that their children endure, the curse will continue. It's up to the black woman, not just the men. It's up to the black women to be intent and serious about stopping.